Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I'm going to be running you through my process for editing GoPro underwater images. Now if you're unfamiliar with who I am or my work, my name is Kaush. I'm a wildlife conservation biologist, filmmaker and photographer and for the first two years of my underwater filmmaking career I was shooting exclusively on GoPro Hero 7 and I was able to get images such as these mainly by knowing what settings to use in the camera as well as learning some editing tricks which I'm going to share with you today. Now, before we start on the edit, it's important that you go back and watch my video on the best GoPro settings for shooting underwater. This is just gonna help you set up the camera perfectly to make the edits much easier. Don't worry if you've got images that you shot before knowing about these settings changes. The techniques that I show you today are gonna to be applicable for raw images as well as JPEGs as well. You can just do a lot more with raw images because there's more information in there, but this is applicable to JPEGs as well. And I'm gonna show you today just what you can do with the JPEG image. So now that our cameras are all set up perfectly, let's jump into Lightroom and see which image we're gonna to edit today. So today we're going to be working on this image of a green sea turtle that I shot back in the Maldives in 2019. As you can see, it's a JPEG and it's not shot in the flat color profile that I advised in my settings video. It's shot in GoPro color, making it super saturated. You can see just how saturated these blues and aquas are. But with just a few basic steps in the edits, I'm gonna show you just exactly how much of a difference we can make to even a saturated image like this. So if we take a closer look at this image, we can see that it's quite grainy in the background here. This is often a problem that happens when you get a GoPro and use the settings straight out of the packaging. The ISO is set way too high and it ends up with grainy images like this. We can also see that there's this ugly oversaturated aqua on the underside of the turtle, which should be much more white, as well as on the reef below the turtle as well. I'm gonna show you a few tips for taking away that oversaturation and bringing back some of the natural colors of this image. The first thing that I wanna do in this image is bring down the exposure and bring up the contrast. When you have an image like this where the subject is in the middle of the frame, you really wanna draw the viewer's eye to the subject and make it the standout point. So increasing the contrast a little bit is just gonna help with that. After that, we're gonna bring down the shadows all the way and also bring down the blacks just a touch as well. I wanna go with a little bit more of a darker edit for this, especially with the blues in the background, just to make the lighter colors on the turtle stand out. So that's gonna be it for what we do in this basic controls tab for now. We can always come back and fine tune this later. Next up, we're gonna move down to the tone curve. Now this is essentially controlling all aspects of light within the image. So if we take a closer look at this graph and look at the most bottom point of it, this is essentially controlling all the darkest aspects of the image. So if we raise this up, you can see how much fade it adds to the image. The opposite goes to the highest point of the graph. This controls the highlights and the most white parts of the image. So my go-to for basic edits like this is to create what we call an S-curve. This is going to involve making three points on the graph. The first one controls the shadows. The second, which is right in the middle of the graph, controls the mid-tones in the image. And the third point controls the highlights of the image. Now to create the S-curve, we simply bring down the shadows a little bit, increase the mid-tones a touch, and bring up the highlights just a touch as well. So as you can see here, it creates just a slight S within the curve. That's gonna be it for the tone curve right now. Like I said before, we can always come back and fine tune these, none of these settings are final. Now we come down to the color mixer, and this is really where all the magic is going to happen. If you're just opening up Lightroom for the first time or you haven't really played with this a lot, yours might look a little bit different to this. It's just the way in which the settings are arranged. You might have it so that the individual categories are separate like this. I prefer having all the settings in one simple column like this. I just find it easier and faster for the edit, but you configure it however you find easiest. Now, as you can see, there's three different categories, hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is essentially what shade of each color you want. Saturation is exactly that. You can either increase or decrease the saturation of a specific color. And luminance is how much light each color is giving off. So I always start with hue. It's important to get the tones right before you start messing with the saturation and luminance. Now, as you can see from this image, it's mainly gonna be aquas and blue. The aquas in the underside of the turtle and in the reef below the turtle and deep darker blues in the background. There's also probably gonna be some greens hiding in those aquas and purples, which generally hide a little bit in aquas, but mainly in the deep blues as well. Now, one of my tips for desaturating those ugly aquas is to shift them in the hue chart towards the blue. This combined with shifting the blues just a touch more to the darker blue side as well can help get rid of some of those uglier green blues in the aquas. In this image, there's also some purples. We're gonna shift it towards the magenta side for now. It's gonna make the image look a little bit uglier right now, but we're gonna fix this again later on. After that, we're gonna come down to the saturation and the first thing that we always do is completely desaturate the aqua tab. Nine times out of 10, this is really gonna help with getting rid of those ugly, oversaturated aquas and green blues. We're also gonna desaturate the blues just a tiny bit. If we desaturate it too much, it's gonna make everything too grainy and we're gonna lose the essence of it being underwater. So we don't wanna mess with it too much, just a tiny bit of desaturation. Completely increasing the saturation of the purples here is gonna give me the contrast that I'm looking for. So that's what I'm gonna do. Next up, we're gonna come down to the luminance tab and increase the luminance of the aqua quite a lot. 
This combination of decreasing the saturation of aqua as well as increasing the luminance tends to help a lot with bringing back the natural colors of things that should be white or warm colored. So for example, in this, the underside of the turtle and the reef below, this is a great combination and I think it will help you a lot in your edits. We're gonna decrease the luminance of the blues just a touch just to make the background a little bit darker and make the subject stand out and then decrease the luminance of the purple all the way. Now, if we zoom in and take a closer look at the turtle and the background, there's still a decent amount of grain in the background there, especially in the blue, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you a trick for that later. As you can see on the turtle's face, there's quite a lot of ugly purple here as well, but I'm gonna show you a trick for that. That's gonna help bring out some more of the color in the turtle itself. We didn't really see any green earlier on, obviously, in the image, but as we take a closer look now, we can see that there's a little bit of sneaking in there on the pectoral fin of the turtle itself. So we can just go back and take care of that now. By shifting the green all the way to the yellow side, it matches the natural tones of the turtle's actual fin itself, and decreasing all that saturation brings back the normal colors of the turtle. That's going to be it for the color mixer tab. If we take a look at the before and after of just that tab alone, you can see what an incredible impact it has on the edit. That's pretty good in itself for an edit. You can see that we've taken away a lot of those oversaturated blues and made the turtle a lot clearer, bringing out more of those warm tones. We could call it there as far as the edit goes, to be honest, we've already made such a massive difference to the image, but these next couple of tips that I'm gonna show you are just gonna help take the edit to the next level. Now, masks are a great tool for isolating specific parts of your image and making changes to just that area. Like I said at the start of the edit, my aim is to draw everyone's attention to the subject, in this case, the turtle, which is in the center of the image and masks are just gonna help me accentuate that. Now, the best way to make the turtle stand out from the background, select it itself. The new subject select tool is great for selecting subjects as obvious as this one. It uses AI just to pick out what it thinks is the subject, and in this case, it's gonna work perfectly. Once we've picked out the subject, what I really wanna do is make it stand out from the background. So I'm gonna reduce the highlights on this because I think it's a little bit too much, as well as decrease the shadows all the way. The classic technique that I use to make the subject stand out from the background is to increase the clarity and the texture just a little bit. The next thing that we want to do is bring back some of those more natural colors in the turtle shell and just fix some of those issues with the purple that we were having before. Simply done, just shift the tint a little bit more to the purple side and the temperature slider more towards the warm side. And as you can see, that makes a massive difference in just making it stand out a little bit more. That's going to be it for the turtle itself. Next, let's focus on the background. The first thing that we're going to do is bring up a linear gradient from the bottom up. This is essentially going to cover and take care of the reef below the turtle. I want to increase the white of the reef below the turtle, so I'm going to shift the white on this chart just up a little bit as well as decrease the texture. Next up, we're going to do a very similar thing and draw a linear gradient from the top down. This is essentially taking care of that open blue space behind the turtle. My goal for this is to make the blues darker and stand out as well as add contrast to the white below on the reef. So we simply decrease the exposure as touch, take out all of the highlights and bring down the shadows all the way just to increase that darkness in the blue behind the turtle. Next up, we're gonna go down and take out all of the texture. As we saw earlier in the image, it was super noisy, but this is gonna help and get rid of all that noise in the background. And that's it, that's the edit complete. As you can see, the before image is very typical of what you get from a standard GoPro image. Overly saturated blues and no difference between the subject and the background. With just some simple basic edits, we've brought this picture to life and brought back so many more of those warm natural tones in the turtle as well as the background. It's amazing what you can do with the settings that we have at our disposal here and the impact just a few minor changes can have. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and maybe it's given you some tips for your next edits. If you're interested in learning more about Lightroom and how to get into some more detailed edits and using more of the settings here, or if you're interested in finding out how to edit underwater videos, check out my Patreon account. I'm creating an amazing community of passionate creatives over there on Patreon people that are interested in both underwater and topside photography. I'll be teaching everything from the basics to the more complex principles. So if you're interested in learning more, the link is in my bio, check it out and I'll see you over there. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.